Children's Museum of Cleveland. Today we are in our meadow and we are going to read some story times all about some bees, some bugs, and some flowers you might find in the spring. Okay, are you ready to read? This first one is called The Very Greedy Bee. In a busy, buzzy beehive lived a very greedy bee. All the other bees worked hard making honey and cleaning the hive, but the greedy bee spent all day long gobbling up pollen and guzzling nectar. Slurp, slurp, burp, slurp, slurp, burp. The greedy bee wouldn't share his nectar with anyone. He wouldn't even let a tired ladybug sit on his flower. Find your own flower, he shouted. This one's mine. And when one day the greedy bee found a meadow full of the biggest, juiciest flowers he had ever seen, he decided not to tell anyone. Yummy, he buzzed. Lots of flowers and they're all for me. Wow. The greedy bee whizzed and buzzed from flower to flower, slurping and burping and growing fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. At last his tummy was full and he settled down on a big pink flower in a warm yellow sunshine and fell fast asleep. When the greedy bee woke, it was dark. He hurried to fly, but his tummy was so roly and pulley that biff, bath, bang, thump. He went down instead of up with a crash onto the ground. I'm scared, cried the greedy bee, and I don't know where my home is. When he saw two glowing eyes in the long dark grass, eek, he cried, a monster is coming to eat me. But it wasn't a monster. It was two friendly fireflies with their bottoms glowing in the dark. What's wrong, they asked. I'm too full to fly, wailed the greedy bee. And now I can't go home in the dark. Follow us, said the fireflies. And they set off a long, long journey home. Through the forest of flowers and the squishy mud, over a hill and under the stars trudged the greedy bee. He never walked so far, and he was very tired. Nearly there, called the firefly. Then, with a whoosh of the rushing river. I'm almost home, cried the greedy bee. It's the stream. And it was, but his hive was on the other side of it. Oh no, said the greedy bee, sadly flopping down on the grass. How will I ever get across? help you, said the tiny ant with the big leaf. The ant and his friends hopped onto the big leaf and put it in the water. Jump on, they cried. Helped by the fireflies, the greedy bee and the ants were all splishing and splashing to get to the other side of the stream. Hooray, I'm home, cried the greedy bee. Where have you been, said the other bees. I overslurped, said the greedy bee. I would have never made it back home without my new friends if they hadn't been so kind. Now, I'm going to share my best honey with them. Would you like some too? Yes, said the other bees. Let's have a party. Everyone enjoyed a midnight feast of the yummy runny honey, except for one very sleepy, but very happy, not so greedy bee. The end. Okay, my friends, we have finished our first story. And like true Children's Museum story times, we are going to sing our first song. It is called, Do You Like to Buzz? Now, my friends, if you do know this song, feel free to sing with us. Otherwise, show us your best dance moves. You guys ready? We're ready. ready. Okay. Everybody stand up if you're at home following along. And this song is called, Do You Like to Buzz? And we're gonna sing it twice. And if you want, you can get out your wings like a bee, and you can buzz with us. On the count of three, everybody. One, 
two, three. Do you like to buzz? Are you covered all in fuzz? Do you call your hive a home in the garden where you roam? Do you like to make fun of everybody's a little funny? Do you like to buzz? Do you like to buzz? Are you covered all in fuzz? Do you call your hive a home in the garden where you roam? Do you like to make honey? Are your stripes a little funny? Do you like to buzz? Great job singing and dancing, everybody. Give yourselves a standing O as we move on to our next story. Our next story is one of my favorites. It's called Bear Wants More. It's by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. If you're at home joining us, I'm gonna need your help. We're gonna keep saying that Bear wants more, and I want you to shout it out with me throughout the story. Can we do that? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So here we are, Bear wants more. When springtime comes in his warm winter den, a bear wakes up very hungry and thin. He waddles outside and roots all around. He digs and he paws fresh shoots from the ground. He nibbles on his lawn till the last blade is gone. But the bear wants more. Mouse scampers by with his acorn pail. Come along, mouse squeaks to Strawberry Vale. So up mouse hops onto bear's big back. They tromp through the woods for a fresh fruit snack. The berries go sweet and they eat, eat, eat. But the bear wants more. The noon sun glows when a long hops hair. Good day, friend mouse. How do you do, friend bear? I'm hungry, roars bear. Hare says, follow me. There's a fresh clover patch by the cottonwood tree. They nibble on their lunch with a crunch, crunch, crunch. But the bear wants more. Badger shuffles by with his new fishing pole. There's a fine fish feast at the old fishing hole. They head to the pond and they sit by the shore. Bear catches fish, but he still wants more. Meanwhile, Back at the big bear den, wake gopher and mole with raven and wren. They bake honey cakes, they decorate the lair. It's a springtime party for their good friend bear. Bear rubs at his tummy, he smells something yummy. And he still wants more. Bear sniffs and he snuffles as a sweet breeze blows. He romps to his home, he follows his nose. His friends yell surprise when he gets to his den, but Bear is so big that he can't fit in. Bear wails, what luck. I am stuck, stuck, stuck in my own front door. Mouse squeaks, poor Bear, he's wedged too tight. Hair tugs, Raven pushes with all of their might. Badger gets a stick and he pries so hard that Bear pops out and lands in the yard. Since Bear is so wide, they party outside and he still wants more. Bear opens presents, he gobbles honey cakes. He eats so much that his big tummy aches. He snuggles in the grass and he snores big snores. He is full, 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 but his friends want more. The end. Thank you so much for those who helped me at home telling me how much Bear still wants more. We're gonna do one more song together before Miss Casey reads our final story. So everybody can stand up. And for this one, you need your five fingers out. I'm gonna grab my song sheet. So this song is called Five Busy Bees. And you can act it out with us at home, or if you already know it, you can sing along too. So it goes, five busy bees on a lovely spring day. This one said, let's fly away. This one said, we'll drink some nectar sweet. This one said, there's pollen on our feet. This one said, and then we'll make some honey. And the fifth one said, 
Good thing it's warm and sunny. So the five busy bees went flying along, singing a happy honeybee song. The end. You can take your seats because Miss Casey is going to lead us in our last story of the day. All right, so our last forest friend we're going to visit today is The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carlisle. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came out. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're all mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew away. At six o'clock, it melts a yellow jacket. Hey you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh. You're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At eight o'clock, it came across a, playing, a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? You insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching out its claws. Oh, you're not big enough to fight, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? You insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 12 noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily, showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? You insist, said the gorilla, beating on its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, you want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not 
big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At a quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, hey, you, want to fight? And the whale tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. Ah, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Soon, all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You're welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. The end. Thank you so much for joining us for our very special story time here in the meadow. Don't forget to check back to the website, cmcleveland.org, for more videos while you guys are at home. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you again 